Nzinga. And this is Hot Business on our economist uh, expert front. Today we speak to Fred Razak. He's the chief trading strategist at C. M trading. Now, as you know, South Africa's energy crisis is really at the forefront of everyone's minds, with many wondering if it can be fixed at all. Fred Razak is chief trading strategist at CM Trading, as I mentioned. He takes a closer look at some of the issues and offers his thoughts on this. A, a very good evening to you, Fred. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, it's interesting, uh, my producer thought we should look at this from a doomsday clock uh, prism. Is it something that South Africa registers on? Are we anywhere close to Armageddon? You know, like I, I visited South Africa for the first time last summer. Um, and coming from a perspective from the rest of the world, I mean, I, I don't know of another country around the world that has so many resources uh, that has the available money, uh, even though that there's uh, very a lot of difficulty in the economy with a lot of people unemployed, uh, that is experienced such a tremendous inconvenience that's so self-sabotaging as South Africans. I mean, this is probably um, one of the most negligent things any government in the world could possibly do. I mean, you know, to not have a standard of electricity that runs 24-7 uh, is just really, um, it's unheard of and, you know, un untenable. It's also unacceptable uh, from any, um, you know, modern state kind of perspective. And many countries around the world are trying to improve themselves to lure in people um, and South Africa is such a beautiful country, such nice people. Um, and yet, you know, it's, it's just self deprecating. Uh, it's self sabotaging to a certain degree. Uh, because if you can't produce, if, if a person who has a, a store owner can't open up his shop until 12 o'clock because he doesn't have electricity in order to put on the coffee machine, how could anybody make money? I mean, it's just, it's really a very difficult environment. Fred, I'm curious um, how it's seen from the international perspective. I mean, we have certainly started getting used to it, not something that we'd like to do. And there are concerns that this is pretty much going to be part, an everyday part of our lives. So how is load shedding understood in other countries abroad, I know when I speak to people who are, you know, in the international scene, they don't seem to even understand what I'm talking about. No, no, because it's untenable. It's really untenable. I mean, I could remember one time about almost 20 years ago where in New York, the electricity was out for about three days. Um, and that was just because of a power ridge. And it, it was a serious issue. But that's three days. Uh, this is indefinite and it's scheduled and you know uh, like yes you can live around it right and and the south africans have learned to live around the consequences of it but it's not a standard that's acceptable for a country to move forward in absolutely and this is at a time when we are talking about the need for greater fdi uh, we saw conversations at the g20 cop 27 talk about western countries investing in south africa particularly towards renewable energy but some detractors, particularly here in South Africa, still say there is a place for gold and there's no need to shut down some of these energy plants that could still generate power. What are your thoughts about this? What is, What are the perspectives on international renewable investments in South Africa? So I think it's great. I, I Get the job done. I don't care how you do it. Get the job done, even if you have to you know, hire out the energy for a few years to a foreign country. For to a foreign multinational just that you can get the energy so you could lift up the GDP. I mean, you know, people don't realize what is associated with a lower income bracket. It's not just, oh, we don't have enough money to, you know, buy nicer things. It's no, it's a health risk. It's an emotional health risk. It's a it's not giving people the hope 
uh, that they can do things for themselves and add convenience for their themselves and their children. Um, you know, in when the coronavirus started, there was a just a tremendous tri- debate in the United States whether or not they should shut down the economy, leave the economy open, and you know, and one of the things that you know a person argued um, is that in a recessionary environment, there's something like 50 million. Uh, suicides per year it spikes right because of financial pressures because of emotional pressures and it all surrounding just the unemployment moving you know just a couple of percentages now imagine okay when you can't run a business or you can't offer services to your clients just because you don't have the means to do that. You have the whereabouts, but you don't have the technical means to do that. Um, And yes, the tourism in South Africa is still moving forward because the hotels are circumventing it, but that's only one aspect of the economy. There's a lot of domestic economy that you're looking to produce so that you can have the environment that you're looking for. So you say get it done no matter what. We've seen the introduction of Kapow ships in South Africa. There's also been protests against it, particularly with the view of the impact on the environment. Are they the answer to our current crisis? Well, I think that it should be a two-pronged attach. I mean, you know, discussing the environment, yes, down the line, there should be things that will produce alternative energy that is green. Uh, but in the interim... In the interim, until you phase out of it, you have a emergency that needs to be directed right now. Yes, do I agree that the environment needs to be uh, protected? Absolutely. But, you know, at what cost, right? At what cost are you willing to do that? Um, and I believe that, you know, to do something that is more, you know, old energy uh, in the interim until you do phase out of it, uh, it needs to be said. So what are you going to do? You're going to wait 20 years until renewable energy is going to be or green energy is going to be available for you and, you know, risk losing some of the best people in your country because they're going to go somewhere else because they can't live on these standards and they could live somewhere else on a higher standard. You know, you've got to take all these factors into account. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us and sharing your views. Much appreciated. Fred Razak, who is a chief trading strategist at CM Trading, speaking to us about the country's uh, current energy crisis. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Fred. Uh, and hopefully next time we'll have an easier ride with our technology.